Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this demonstration, we're going to talk about how to read input from existing files and how to create new files and write output to those files. And this is going to be a lot like what we've done with C in and C out, except instead of using C in as our input stream uh, with the uh, extraction operator to read in stuff, we're going to use the extraction operator with our own stream that we make that uses a file that reads from a file. And similarly, we're going to write to a file uh, using, instead of C out, a new file stream that we create that writes to the file that we define. Um, so let's delve into it. As we think about working with files, we got to remember that a file stream in its most generic term is just a place, an area on secondary storage to hold information. And so what's nice about it being in secondary storage is that there's some permanence to it. So if we write information to a file, it can stay there uh, as we close the program, close the command line, uh, restart the computer maybe, um, and then it's still there when we get it back. So we don't have to have the user enter in the same information when they run the program every time. They, we can pull information from a text file and also we can save new information to text file so that way it's there for later. Uh, so pretty cool. We've all worked with files. We all know how great they are. Um, but in this program, we're going to deal specifically with saving to a new text file. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to read from text files. So what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to even initially include IO stream. We don't need it for files. Um, we only need it if we want to output stuff to the screen or get stuff that the user types from CN. Instead, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to include a new header called fstream. And so this is going to be our first step whenever um, we're working with files. We'll include fstream. And that will give us access to the file streams. Now, a file stream is just like any other uh, input and output stream. So we've used C in and C out. Somewhere in IO stream, there's actually declared um, an output stream, so an O stream. C out, something similar to that in output in, in IO stream, not quite, but something like that. And just like any other variable, so I could include int num. We've defined a new variable called num that is of type int, so it can hold whole numbers. Here we've got a variable called C out of type O stream. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create an OF stream, an output file stream. And we're going to use that file stream. So here we're creating a new stream. Pretty cool. Now we can name it whatever we want, just like other variables, any valid identifier. So I'm just going to call it file out, but you can call it, you know, file out or out file or text out or just out. Um, whatever is meaningful and appropriate for your program, you can call it. Now that's step two. Step three is using that declared file stream to open a file that we're going to write to. And this will create a new file if it doesn't already exist or it'll overwrite it if it does exist. So the way to do that is to use whatever you named it. So in this case, file out, but whatever you named your variable dot open. And then inside these parentheses, we're going to put a string value. Um, that's going to be the name of our text file. And so I'm just going to call it output.txt. And then what we can do now is write information to that text file, just like we would with C out. So, you know, an example of C out would be C out hello and L. What we can do now is file out with the insertion operator and then whatever we want to output to the screen. I'm going to output, this is my first programmatically created text file followed by an end of line. Pretty simple, just like the C out statement. Just a little bit of a different message. And then the last thing after you're done, and you can have multiple ones of these, just like with C out, is to close the file stream. And so you'll want to do file out.close. This is easy to forget because your program will actually compile and run without doing this step, but it won't actually close the file stream until the program exits. What we want to do is we want to close the file stream whenever we're done using it. So after the last bit of information is written, be correct and close your file stream. That way it can be used by other programs. It's good to get in that habit. So that's the last step. So step one, uh, include file stream. Step two is to declare your stream variable, naming it whatever's appropriate. And then step three, open the file with whatever file you want to write to in this case. And then step four is to output. And again, you can output anything you want. Uh, just like C out, you can use um, numbers and variables, and um, you can use IO manip, the header there to, you know, format the floating point numbers or set the width of things just like we've done in the past. And then last step is to close the file. Let's see what this program does uh, now that we've written it. So I'm going to switch to the command line. I've already got the command to compile it. 
Now, if I type dir, or if you're on Mac, you can type ls or Linux, uh, you'll notice I've got this createfile.cpp and I've got createfile.exe because that's what I named um, the output here. And um, so when we compiled it, and then I've got this read file, we'll use that in the next video. Um, but I don't have any txt files, no text files, no output.txt. But once I run the program, so let's go ahead and run it, create file, you'll see that it is created. So I'm gonna type dir again. So now we have this new file, output.txt. Notice that when I run my program, there's no output to the screen. We didn't actually see out anything, so nothing's getting output to the screen. But that's okay, we're outputting stuff to the file. So if I wanted to open this file, I could type code output.txt. That opens it in Visual Studio Code, and you can see here's what we created, our first programmatically created text file. And if I change it, so I'm gonna just change the output here, second, you can see that this is going to change what is output when we run our program. Let's switch back to the command line and let me go ahead and clear the screen, toggle through those commands, run it again. Here is our second programmatically create text file. So our output.txt just now says second. So note here that it doesn't append to our file when we run it again, it just replaces it with the new content. So that's important. Every time we run our program, we're overwriting the old information with new stuff. Now, one thing we might want to do to expand this program is let the user pick what the name of the file we're going to save to is. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to include IOStream because we're getting input from the user. And we're going to also include string because we want to save the file name in a string variable. And so what I'm going to do now is declare that string variable. We can call it file name. I'm saying file name is all one word. That's why I didn't capitalize the N here. But uh, if it, you thought of it as two words, definitely capitalize the N with camel case. And then let's prompt the user to enter a file name. So I'm just going to take this code here and enter it in. So we say enter file name, and then we use CN to read in that file name. Then what I'm gonna do is take that file name variable and I'm gonna use it here as what I want to open. We want to open whatever the user types as our file name. Now the user is going to have to type something without spaces because we're just using the regular um, insertion operator. So remember it stops at white space. Let's see how this works. Compile it, run it one more time. Here, now we're prompted for a file name. So maybe I want to create a passwords file, password.txt, or let's call it passwords. Now if I type dirt, you can see we've got this new passwords file created. And if I open that in code, you can see here it is, my second programmatically created text file. Now that's not a very great password. Let's uh, let the user pick what the passwords that we want to store here or whatever the information is. Let's create another variable to hold whatever message we want to store in this file. Well, of course we want to prompt the user. Uh, and store the message. So we could use CN with the insertion operator, just like uh, normal, but this will only let us read in, again, one word of input. So let me show you. Before I do that, I didn't actually use the message, right? I need to here change this to be message, right? Because that's what we want to output to our file now. If I wanted to do uh, a password with spaces in it, uh, so this is password. Uh, then it's only going to read in this because of how we wrote our program. See, we just got this. So this is a great opportunity to use GetLine. Um, and so this is just, just a little aside here um, about um, if you do use GetLine, you do have to be uh, sure that the current line you're at is what you want to read information on. And I'll show you what I mean here as well. So GetLine reads in the whole line of input and it accepts two parameters. First is where you want to read it from. In this case, we want to read it from the user's input, so CN, and then where you want to put it, so message. Uh, now, this is not going to quite work yet either, but we're getting closer. Compile it, run it, and we'll write passwords. And then, uh, oh, notice it didn't even give me an option to say anything. Um, so you can see here, it just said message, but it didn't wait for me to enter a message. and that's, that's a real bummer. Uh, so um, not very useful program now. We broke something and this might be a hard problem for you to track down. Notice that the passwords file is now blank. Um, but 
we can fix that, uh, what's actually happening is we're reading in the file name, just one word using cn, and then we're stopping at the enter when the user hits enter. So when we use git line, it's actually reading the in the enter from that first line of input um, as the message, not waiting for another line of code. And so what we'll do is we'll add a cn.ignore. Remember this ignores input from the input stream, and we can say how many characters we want to ignore, and when we want to stop ignoring. So if we wrote something like this, it would say, I want to ignore up to 10 characters, or if I get to a new line, just ignore that and stop ignoring. Uh, now we want to write, really ignore everything the user input up into the new line. So uh, we want a really big number here. Um, the biggest number we can possibly put is int max. This is a predefined constant. It's in a new header file. Uh, it's the largest number an integer can hold. So that's like saying ignore it absolutely as much as you possibly can or until we get to a new line. Um, so in order to do that, we need to include one more header and this is called C limits. And so that uh, includes the limitation of a integer, the highest number it can hold. Um, so now let's see if our code works now with that little addition for us. So it's going to ignore up to and including the new line, and then we'll get a new line, uh, a new line of text for uh, the message that we want to store in the file. So if I compile and run, let's just say passwords.txt and say, this is my password. One, two, three, four, five, password great password again, um, then this, all of this is what should be output to the file. Let's flip back to the file and you can see sure enough, this is what's stored into my text file. So we've created a program that writes whatever the user types to the text file. Now we could add other information to it. We could add different output here. I could add another line, file out, something like that there and that'll get output as well. Um, just to kind of demonstrate that you can um, really, anything you can do with C out, you can do with um, file out or whatever that you name your file stream. Um, so if we look now, this is added to our text file after the user's input. Just to review the steps, step one, always include file stream. Step two, declare your file stream variable. In, that case, in this case, it's this OF stream because we're outputting a file. Then step three, whatever file you want to open, open it with your file stream variable that you created and then do any kind of output you want in that's step four. And then don't forget to close the file after that. Note that if you forget to open the file, so if you forget this step three here, let me just comment that out, your program will still compile. So sure enough, it compiles without error. We can go ahead and create a new file. I'll just call it newfile.txt um, and enter a message. Um, but that file actually never gets created. Notice there's nothing called newfile.txt over here, nothing nothing at all. Bear that in mind. Um, we're dealing here with file streams um, and the compiler won't check um, if you open one. And uh, likewise, the program when it's running won't check if the file stream is open. It just uh, won't be able to write that information, whatever you output to the file won't get output to the file. So don't forget step three uh, for the other and don't forget step five. So don't forget to open the text file and don't forget to close the text file. If you don't write stuff to it, you'll catch that pretty easily um, as you're looking through your code. Um, and if you don't declare your variable, you'll definitely get a compiler error. Or if you don't do step one and declare the file stream, you'll get a compiler error as well. So again, hope this video was useful. Let me know if you have any questions and go on to the next video to see about reading from text files.